Molly Guy is the founder and owner of Stone Fox Bride, the popular wedding boutique for the alternative bride. We sat down over tea to talk pursuing her passion and trusting the journey. Where should I start in the journey? The most exciting place. <laughs> <laughs> or um, like, or the most emotionally <laughs> difficult, really whatever you are. Well, I, I was going to say like the most exciting for me it tends to be like the most like bleak and miserable. So okay, that's perfect. <laughs> I spent so much of my life like, lying in bed, like willing things to happen, like visualizing, willing, like making it happen. And so much of that stuff did happen. But looking back on it, I feel like if I had loosened the reins quite a bit, I probably would have been a lot happier. There's this quote, I think it's Allen Ginsberg, that... Um, like, don't fool yourself, the light at the end of the tunnel is usually just the glare of the incoming train, like, when you get so <laughs> stuck on something. I rewrote my book, but I got really hung up on the edits, and I kept rewriting it, and rewriting it, and rewriting it, and during this time, I took a job that I really hated, and I took another job that I really hated, and was just, like, spinning my wheels, like, I felt so unhappy. And and during this time I got married and while I was getting married like the only respite from my shitty job was going to look at like the flower places and planning the menu and the cake test tasting and looking for dresses and just kind of like creatively brainstorming and um, I also noticed like when I was at work trying to like plan my wedding I couldn't like find that like fun website that I wanted to like dive into and like get lost in and procrastinate from like there was no like wedding culture that I identified with. After I got married, which was really fun, I felt really sad when it was over because it was like the one thing that had really like sustained me. I said to a friend of mine, too bad I can't get married full time as a career because I really enjoyed it and I was really good at it. You know, I had this idea for a wedding store that would be really beautiful wedding dresses and just like a pretty curated shop. So that's a good idea that doesn't exist. And one thing led to another and that was, um, that was three years ago this month and that was how it all started. Would you like to see flourish in your life? I would like um, for my business to flourish as a result of me like really taking um, the time to do the hard thing, which is not just like put my head in the clouds and like get on the Pinterest board, but really like assess the numbers and make smart moves based on the num based on the hard facts, based mm -hmm. on the numbers. Uh, what is your most complex relationship? Probably my relationship to my mom. It's a constant battleground of um, like cognitive dissonance. Like on the one hand, there's so much love and there's so much joy, and then there's also, and I'm sure she feels it too, with this like the disappointment, the confusion, the longing, the loss. Did a lot change for you after you had your daughter? in terms of your relationship with your mom? I like look at my daughter who's like so obsessed with me. She's two years old and that, you know, it's probably a few more years till she like is embarrassed of me and doesn't want to be seen with me and then till she hates me and then till <laughs> she wants my car keys and then, you know what I mean? But, but like the whole time, like I think it's our job as a mother just to be like present and un and not swayed by their, our daughter's like emotional insanities. But it must be, but it's hard for on both, both for both parties. I think. I think I just became much more sensitive to probably her side of the story. What is your most grounding ritual that you do? Uh, take a hot bath when I really at the end of the day I take a super 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 hot bath. It's nice to do that at the end of the day. I always know in the morning. You can't. There are no such thing as mornings when you have a child. Fair enough. Fair enough. What do you feel comes most naturally to you, and what do you feel sort of you struggle to navigate the most? What do you mean? Like, I want to be brave, and it's hard. That's probably the thing that's hardest for me, right? And the thing that comes most naturally to me is probably like my friendships and my relationships, and both are like valuable, mm -hmm. but like, you know, one's easy. I think the older I get, the more aware I become of how. Um, much I have this need to be liked and I'm aware of how much time I waste trying to like be liked or be funny or be cool or be easygoing and um, it's a real waste of time and of money like especially when I first opened my business I had employees and I was just like wanted them to like me looking back on it now it's just like such a waste you know it's so much easier to like smile and brush things under the rug than saying like this is totally unacceptable 
and this is not going to work, and let's sit down and figure out how this doesn't happen again. Like, I don't want to fucking do that. I'm a second child. Like, I'm a Pisces. It's the last thing I want to do. It's the last thing I want to do. As a middle child, and it's sort of like a natural people pleaser, what keeps you going through those moments when you're like, this is all on me? You're not doing anyone any favors when you don't. When, when someone in a leadership role doesn't act like a leader, and so it's like in my employee's best interest for me to for, for me to be a leader and not to like cower and be cowardly and um, wishy-washy. And it helps me to remember that there are women that are getting married that are in need of the service that I'm providing. So in order for me to make that service available, I have to show up and do my job. There's like women that I admire, um, like a Kim Gordon or um, Julianne Moore, or Marguerite Duras, or Louise Bourgeois, or Michelle Obama, or Margaret Thatcher. I mean, anyone, you, I would imagine that very few of those women really give a shit about how they're liked, or I would like to think they don't so much. It's just they care about like who they're showing up for, and what their message is, and um, fulfilling like their meaning. Mm -hmm.